You know how the Marvel's Wolverine extend his claw, right? Not from his fingers, but from inside his hand? When you think about it, that is scientifically questionable. I mean, yeah, of course, it's a fictional work. But what if I told you? There is, or are actually, species of animals that works in a similar way. It's kinda obvious since it's probably in the title and thumbnail anyway, but yes, it is the Wolverine Frog. So, let me brought up the question. What exactly is Wolverine Frog? The Wolverine Frog is not always known as the Wolverine Frog. It's called the Wolverine Frog only after scientists discovered they have extendable bone claws. That publication was in 2008. It's originally and still more commonly known as the hairy frog. Why? Because it's hairy. But let's hold that thought for a while. I'm gonna dive into that topic later. For feather and herpetologists, you most likely have known this animal to have the scientific name Trichobatracus robustus. Trichos means hair. Batracos means frog. Robustus as a word originated from robur, which means oak. Robustus means like an oak wood, aka hard and strong. So, robustus basically just means robust. Just a fun etymology trivia for you. Anyway, based on 2021 publication, the wolverine frog is grouped together with the genus Astylosternus. And so the author synonymized the name to Astylosternus robustus. They can be found in the western part of Central Africa. The tadpoles live in fast-moving rivers and at the foot of small waterfalls. Intuitively, the adults also live around that area. They can be found in rainforests, but further away from water body, and even in some plantations. They are sometimes hunted to be consumed. In some areas, people even eat their tadpoles. Apparently, Cameroonian traders also hunted them to be exported into the US and Japan. Among the frogs, wolverine frog is medium-sized, males averaging 13 cm in length, while the females averaging 9 cm. By the way, in most frogs and toad species, males are usually smaller than the females. So this is quite unique, but not the only case though. Their toe tips are slightly enlarged, four legs are almost webless, while the hind legs are slightly webbed, about one third of the area. The hairy structure on their flanks and thighs can only be found in breeding males. What I want to emphasize is, these are not hairs. By that I mean, not like the mammalian hairs. These are long vascularized papillae. To put it simply, these are skins. Breeding males also have nuptial pads, which are these spiky things on their first digits. These nuptial pads are keratinized. I'm gonna talk about their claws later on as its own section. So let's talk about their behavior and lifestyle first. While they are normally terrestrials, adults will return to water bodies to mate. Breeding season likely occurs between April to June. As I've stated before, male will grow vascularized papillae and nuptial pads. The papillae are thought to allow for increased gas exchange during increased metabolic activity in breeding seasons. This is just a theory, but it's not entirely baseless, because the male's lung structure is different from the female's, so perhaps the hairs help extend the surface area for gas exchange. Anyway, their eggs are clutched and attached to stones in rivers with fast-moving currents. Males are also observed to guard these eggs. However, there have not been extensive studies on their ecology and behavior in the natural habitat so we're still lacking information. In captivity, they would eat pinkies, which are newborn rodents. When they are captured by hunters, they usually deploy their claws to scratch and escape. So, let's talk about these claws. But before that... So, let's talk about the claw. This claw is not similar to the claw of vertebrates. The first obvious difference is the structure. While most claws are keratinous, this claw is not, so it's just bone. The second difference is the mechanism. So, in most animals, claws are normally outside the fingers. 
Even in cats which are famous for retracting their claws, the claws are not inside the fingers. It's just folded into the fingers. You know what? Maybe I'm gonna make a video dedicated on claws sometimes in the future. Anyway, in the case of the wolverine frogs, the claws are normally inside their fingers. So, let's talk about the detail. The claws can be found in digit 2 to 5, so it's not in their thumbs. The claws themselves are actually just the tip of their terminal phalanx. On the tip of their terminal phalanx is a bony nodule. Oh, by the way, terminal phalanx is the most distant bone of your finger. It's also called the distal phalanx. Also, just to clarify, the bony nodule is not fused into the terminal phalanx, so you can technically say this is a different bone from the terminal phalanx. This part is the terminal phalanx. The bony nodule is noted as N. There is a collagen-rich tissue layer between the nodule and the terminal phalanx, notated as C. The bony nodule is suspended by the suspensory sheath, notated as double S. So, what's this bony nodule anyway? The function of this bony nodule is to inhibit the extension of the claw during normal behavior, so it's like a safety cap. Now, what triggers the claw extension is most likely the digital flexor muscle, which is located on the ventral side of the terminal phalanx. The activation of this muscle can flex the phalanx, so it swings downward and puncture the skin. So yes, as I've said, the claw is actually the tip of their terminal phalanx. Oh by the way, this picture you're looking at right now is commonly presented in non-scientific articles or maybe other videos that talks about this frog. But this picture is not actually taken from the wolverine frog. Well, to be precise, it's not taken from Astylosternus robustus. It's from Astylosternus laurenti, an entirely different species. Let me remind you, the wolverine frog we are talking about in this video was named Trichobatracus robustus. So back then, this image is not even from the same genus. Anyway, this is how it looks when the claw is extended. By the way, this picture is from yet another species, which is Astylosternus reophilus. So yes, this claw mechanism is not unique to the wolverine frog. Or perhaps I should say, all of these frogs can be called the wolverine frog. By the way, even though this claw looks like nothing dangerous, apparently it can inflict deep bleeding wound to human hands. Which is why, the hunters usually hunt them with long spears to avoid getting clawed. So far, I've only been talking about how they avert their claw. So, how do they retract their claw? Well, to put it simply, they don't have such mechanism. Or at least, we haven't observed such mechanism yet. After they deploy this claw to defend themselves, the claw just goes in and out loosely. After all, they punctured their tissues to do so. But, after some times, they will regenerate those tissues. And so, their claw, aka their terminal phalanx, will be pulled back into its original position. So, this defense mechanism is quite costly for them. By the way, they are not the only frogs to possess some kind of claws as a defense mechanism. In Japan, there are at least two frogs that do so, which are the autumn frog, Babina subaspera, and the dagger frog. Babina Holsti. They have a different kind of claws though, with different structure and mechanism. Maybe I'll make a video on them in the future if anyone's interested. Anyway, that's it for this video. Since there are still many things to learn about this frog, especially on the practical use of this claw, perhaps there will be more research and new information in the future. But for now, let's just learn what is known. And that's all for now. By the way, if you are here because you're interested in Marvel's Wolverine, I have a video on the Wolverine animal. If you're curious, check it out. Or maybe check this other video recommended by YouTube for you. Anyway, enjoy your day.